Hi, Dr. Hans Christofferson here with you again today. And in this video, we're going to install the Starlink system at Animal Care Clinic. And we're also going to test it out. So stay tuned, it should be good. So I thought before we got on with the install, I would show you all the various parts that are needed. It turns out not everything comes with the kit to permanently install the Starlink system. So there was a bit of a learning curve there, so I'll go through that with you. And I'm doing it inside the clinic here, and as you can see, we're currently deep under renovations here, so it's a little bit dusty, hence the reason I'm not wearing a lab coat and my hair is a bit messy, so stick with me. All right, you've already seen the unboxing video of the Starlink system itself. But over here, we have a bunch of the pieces we need to actually install this properly. So I'm gonna go through them with you right now. I was a little confused by this. When you get the Starlink system, it comes with the three-legged base, and I thought that's what you would just bolt to the roof. But it turns out, no, that's the temporary base for setting up the system and testing it out to actually install it permanently. Starlink has a few other things that you've gotta buy. That wasn't clear to me when I actually bought the system. So they actually have three options, and I'm gonna go uh, through all three with you right now. The first one is the simple roof mount in this lovely box that got the crap piece out of it. Uh, every install system comes with a bag that you can actually put the Starlink dish in so you can carry it up to the roof so it won't get damaged, which is pretty cool. So this one's pretty simple. It comes with all the hardware and it is just a simple roof mount. You bolt it in, you click the dish in and you're done. They call this the volcano mount. There's also a pole mount. If you wanna mount a pole to the side of your house, like with a standard satellite, it sits on top of the pole. I ordered that as well. However, that one hasn't come. It's, who knows? Where it is. Nice thing is, all of these are fairly inexpensive. However, they all required me putting holes either in the side of my building or in my roof, which I wasn't that comfortable doing. So when I went online and looked, there's actually a third option that's not mentioned on the Starlink website, and it's called the Ridgeline Roof Mount. This is actually pretty cool, and I'd actually recommend this for everybody. It's a little more expensive, it's a little over a hundred bucks, but again, not bad. These things were 30 bucks or less uh, for the other mounting systems. This one, you can get it by actually submitting a support ticket and asking for it. You have to say, I want the Ridgeline mount, and you also have to put in the ticket, I authorize you to charge my credit card on file for it. So there you go, it actually came pretty quick. And what's cool about this is it's completely damage free. So let me show you. It comes with a rubber mat, and I'll unroll this when we're on the roof, that sits on the roof. It sits right on the ridge line of the roof. And you take the mount, unlock it. It also comes with a bag for the dish. And then you lay it out on your roof. Now imagine there was a ridge there. And then in these grooves here, you simply lay bricks. And between the rubber mat and the weight of the, the bricks on the ridge mount here, your dish stays in place, completely damage free. It means you can move it, which is really nice because Starlink is just about to lift the geo lock on their units, which means you will actually be able to travel around uh, with your unit if you choose to do that. This is a really quick and easy way to install it. They recommend about 80 pounds of weight or more on this, which works out to basically filling these with bricks and you're there. And then so it sits on the ridge of your roof and you click in the dish here, that's just a lock, locks it in place, and you're good to go. So that's the one that we're going to be using today. I should also mention Starlink also offers a cable management kit, which gives you the ability to pass the cable from the outside of your house through to the inside. So kind of also related to installation. So let me show you that really quickly. So here it is, it's called the cable routing kit. And what's nice is it comes with a spade bit to get the network cable through. Now I have a cinder block wall, so that's not gonna help me a whole lot. But what's pretty cool, it comes with these little caps. You put one on the inside, one on the outside. There's uh, some silicon caulking to waterproof it. And what I really like is 
they have this little fish that you can put through the hole and you actually click the network cable into it like you're sticking it into a network socket and pull it through. That's a really nice feature of this kit. And then also a few cable clips to install it, to install the wire along the building. I should mention the ridge mount also came with that, which is a really nice touch that they give you all the hardware. Cool box too. Here we're using the Starlink app to check for obstructions. We want to see only sky above the dark area. Here, we're free and clear, so we're good to go. I'm installing the ridgeline roof mount using paving stones I happen to have. We'll do this at 15 times speed while jamming to some spacey tunes. Okay, now we're going to take the dish, stuff it in the bag so we can bring it up on the roof. This will be a bit like a mini version of the unboxing video. Instructions again. There's the stand again. And there we go. There is the dish with all of the cable. And I'll do it over here so you can see it. Put the dish in the bag along with the cable like so. Yes, we just zip her all up. That seems to be working, doesn't it? That goes under there. Let's do that. Look at that. Brilliant. Just zip it tight. We are ready to go. And look, there's the carry handle. All right, and I think it is adjustable. Yeah, here we go. Now I can sling this over to my shoulder, and up I go. Okay, here we are up on the roof. We're gonna take it out of the bag and click it into the ridge mount. Let's hope it goes well. Get the cables out of the way. Gotta be really careful hanging on to this thing because the bag is slippery and this thing is threatening just to slide right down the roof. Okay, there we are. Hello, Sterling. In it goes. That's a... For the cabling, I've carefully fed it over the side of the roof, <laughs> secured it with cable ties, and run it into the utility room. Until I get the one inch masonry bit to drill a proper hole, I've just cheated for now and run it in where the gas line enters. I've now plugged in the line from the dish into the power brick along with the Starlink modem. Let's see what happens. Awesome! Dishy McFlatface wakes up after a minute or so and finds the sky. Simple. Couldn't be easier. I've just connected to the Starlink unsecured Wi-Fi and then opened the Starlink app and entered a username and password to secure it. I've also renamed the Wi-Fi to something easier to remember. I've also hardwired the modem into my network with a standard Ethernet cable. There's an extra port on the back of the modem for this. Next, we'll test the connection speed and stability. And now the rubber hits the road. My first test showed 54 megabits per second down and just over 3 megabits per second up. However, when I did the more detailed benchmarking shown here, I got much more reasonable upload speeds. Most importantly, we can see the latency is only around 50 milliseconds, which is awesome. Finally, I wanted to do some real-world testing. Streaming YouTube was no problem, so I tried a video call. While I found that it was possible, it was choppy. The call froze for several seconds every few minutes. 
When I looked at this in detail, I saw that I was losing my connection for 5 to 30 seconds every 3 to 5 minutes. These micro outages are not what I expected. I had thought the outages would be more like regular internet outages lasting several minutes or more and then a full connection again for several hours. The nature of these micro outages means that Starlink is great for most internet usage, including one-way video such as YouTube, and most of what we do here at Animal Care Clinic, but it's not quite ready for video calls, online gaming, or other apps that require real-time two-way internet communications. To explain the gaps, we'll start with a little geometry. Here's the Earth, and here we are. Cozy, eh? Now let's draw a line straight up to the height of the Starlink satellites 550 kilometers above us traveling along the blue dashed line. The Starlink dish's current viewing angle is 25 degrees from the ground, which is 65 degrees from the vertical line. Using some geometry, that means the dish can see an area a little over 2300 kilometers in diameter. Putting this all together, it means at 550 kilometers high, the orbital speed is a little over 7.5 kilometers per second, so the maximum time any one satellite is visible to the dish is about 5 minutes. Flipping things around and looking at our cozy house from above, the area the dish covers at 550 kilometers high can now be seen to be a circle with a diameter of about 2300 kilometers as we calculated. If a satellite travels straight through the center of the circle, the coverage time is just over 5 minutes. However, most satellites will be offset from the center, so their coverage time will be less than 5 minutes. Here we're showing a path that has a coverage time of about 3 minutes. The gaps in coverage that I saw in the video call matched this pattern. You can see this on the animation of the Starlink satellites as well. There's often a brief period with only a single satellite at the edge of the coverage area, or no satellite in the area. Science, eh? The good news is that as more satellites get deployed, these gaps will be filled in. Once again, a departure from vet medicine, but relevant to our clinic and still interesting. At least I think so. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you here again. If you liked this video, please do subscribe. For more information, please visit animalcareclinics.ca or give us a call to book an appointment, 833 for my vets See you next time.